This is John. Jesus is coming, guys, and he's so close now. I mean, he's so close. Does it feel surreal? It feels so surreal to me what's going on in the world. Does it to you guys? It's so surreal. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's something. It's some strange times we're living in. These end times is very strange. And it's changing all the time, and it's getting worse all the time, and, it's, and you can look forward to getting a lot more worse. What I want to show you in this video is how uh, I'll show you how much worse it's looking to get to if you watch the whole video. Uh, this also remember, guys, repent, repent, repent. When we do make mistakes and sins, we need to repent of our sins. And uh, if you ain't saved, please get saved by Jesus Christ. He's the only hope we have. He's my blessed hope. He's my only hope I have, and he should be the only hope you have. Because he is the only hope we have. There's no hope in any, anything other, other than him, Jesus Christ. And he's coming for the rapture soon, and you want to make sure you're saved by him and get to go with Jesus in the rapture and, and uh, filled with his Holy Spirit so you can go with Jesus in the rapture because you don't want to be left behind for seven years per hell on earth and possibly end up in hell for eternity. So please get saved by Jesus and get right with Jesus. And uh, when we do sin, repent of our sins. Now, this first video, guys, is by uh, Saving Lives LLC. And uh, if you uh, have done seen this video, it lasts about 10 minutes. So you can fast forward that part if you've done seen it. If you haven't done seen it, uh, please watch it. And I'll try to tell you each video. So if you've done seen it, each one, you can fast forward it. of the Umbrella High Command, dated 17 months before the viral outbreak occurred. We are here today not just to talk about the future of this company. We're here to talk about its destiny. We're here to talk about the end of the world. We stand on the brink of Armageddon, diseases for which we have no cure. Fundamentalist states who call for our destruction, nuclear powers over which we have no control. And even if we navigate these dangerous waters, we face other, even more inevitable threats. Global warming will melt the polarized gaps within 80 years, flooding 90% of all habitable areas on Earth. Unchecked population growth will overtake food production in less than 50 years, leading to famine and war. This is not conjecture. This is a fact. One way or another, our world is coming to an end. And ye shall hear of wars, and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against a nation, and kingdom against a kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Some breaking news, an earthquake about 17 kilometers, that's about 11 miles, north-northwest of Truckee. It registered 3.8. state of New York was hit by an earthquake this morning. The magnitude 3.1 quake hit around 7 a.m. near Glens Falls, that's just south of Lake George. The quake was strong enough to noticeably shake houses throughout that region. An earthquake striking Baja, California. And Amber's here with us. A lot of people talking about this here in Arizona. Yep, they are feeling it. The 5.6 magnitude quake hitting right near the California Arizona border just south of there into Mexico. Did you feel it? A 5.5 magnitude earthquake rocking Baja California. The effects felt right here in parts of the South Bay. The quake struck near the Sonora border last night just before 8 o'clock. begin with the states of emergency across this country and now here in New York City a state of emergency declared as well. Tonight more than 1300 people sickened in the U.S. At least 39 have died in this country. 
at least 45 states now and the District of Columbia reporting cases. Additional school districts shutting down today. Now 4.9 million school children across the country at home. That first containment zone now in effect. The National Guard on the scene in New Rochelle, New York, just outside the city. And in New York, a ban on crowds of 500 or more, Broadway dark, concert halls and museums set to close. And that state of emergency here in New York City, the mayor reporting a major jump in cases today, 95 confirmed cases, saying there could be 1,000 in just a week. The NCAA tournament canceled. The NBA season suspended. A bright fireball caught on camera wow. filling or falling. Rumor has it the meteor came down somewhere in this area near Camp Verde. Damage extends for miles. Today, President Trump seeing it for himself. A deadly storm system that struck the Nashville area early Tuesday. In 32 years, this is the absolute worst I've ever seen. What do you propose? I propose that we end the world, but on our terms, an orchestrated apocalypse, one that will cleanse the earth of its population but leave its infrastructure and resources intact. Once before, with great success, the chosen few will ride out the storm, not in an ark as in the book of Genesis, but in safety, underground. And when it's over, we will emerge onto a cleansed earth, one that we can then reboot in our image. And just how do you intend to achieve this? The means of our salvation are already at hand. I give to you. The T-Virus. Breaking news tonight, the coronavirus outbreak declared a global pandemic. And now the extreme new measures in the U.S. Large events banned in Washington State and San Francisco. As U.S. cases rise over a thousand, the governor with a grim warning to anyone violating the order. Professor Stephen Hawking and other scientists believe that to secure the future of the human species, we must colonize another planet. I confess that Jesus has come in the flesh. Hello, my beloved brothers and sisters. Today is March 16th, 2020, and I have a very urgent message from our Lord Jesus Christ that he wants me to share with you all. Without further delay, I will begin.
It's over. Tell them it's time. Tell them it's here. Have you not opened your Bible and seen what this world has become? It's evil. It's hateful. It's prideful. It doesn't look unto their blessed hope. It doesn't look unto their king. It focuses on the pleasures of this life, all of which is temporal, all of which I will burn down with the breath of my mouth, including those who partake in the sins of the world. Choose now, all of you, eternal hellfire or the seer of your soul. Time is closing. Do you hear the Messiah speaking? Time is closing. Time is coming to a close, and you don't listen to me call your name. Come to me, and I will give you life freely. Those who love me, him will I give the tree of life. They shall inherit all these things. Do you hear your Messiah calling? I knock. Will you open the door and choose me? My confirmation number was 1250, which means come to an end, suffer, and destroy. My second confirmation number was 619, which means come, receive, and end. All right, guys, and then on this, uh, they show us things in movies, just like it was saying there, and other things. The Illuminati does of what they have, what they have planned, and what's coming. You know, this is obviously a man-made bioweapon that they was going to release, and they've known it for some time, for years now, that they was going to release on on the world, which they have now, in these end times we're in. This uh, coronavirus. And I'm going to show you, and watch this and see if it doesn't look so familiar. This movie is called, it's a trailer for a, a Contagion movie. It's a trailer for it. So watch this and see if it doesn't look real familiar to you guys. It's a groundbreaking ceremony for a new factory. Did you mention seeing anyone who was sick? Anyone on a plane at the airport? No, she said she was jet lagged. The average person touches their face three to five times every waking minute. In between, we're touching doorknobs, water fountains, and each other. Matt, no, no, I, I go up to your room, honey. So we have a virus with no treatment protocol and no vaccine at this time. You had a seizure this morning, Beth. She had a history of seizures and no, 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 allergies. No. As of last night, there were 32 cases. Unfortunately, she did die. Can I go talk to her? Mr. Amoff, your wife is dead. What are you talking about? What happened to her? What happened to her? Is there any way someone could weaponize the bird flu? Is that what we're looking at? Someone doesn't have to weaponize the bird flu. The birds are doing that. Watch this. It's transmission, so we just need to know which direction. On day one, there were two people, and then four, and then 16. In three months, it's a billion. That's where we're heading. They're calling out the National Guard. They're moving the president underground. People will panic. Get away! It will tip over. The truth is being kept from the world. Cook your samples, destroy everything. of everyone who serviced this room. It's an emergency. You can't panic now. I know. I'm gonna get you home. I got people too, Dr. Cheever. We all do. Don't talk to anyone. Don't touch anyone. Stay away from other people. We're back in the We're not sick! This is figuring us out faster than we're figuring it out. It's mutating. You hear that? It's mutating. And then I want you to see this. So you know how they said it started out with two and it went, kept going up and up? Well, watch this about the coronavirus. If I can get it, hang on just a minute, guys, and let me get it to the right place. States, many others were actually. Okay, right here. Really running. So we're, we're looking at another thing we can glean from that uh, exponential or logarithmic chart 
is we can ask the question, well, how many days between it growing by a factor of 10? So here it grows from 10 to 100. And that took seven days if we count those little dots. And then to go from 100 cases reported to 1,000, that took nine. So this says, I don't know if you can see that, but that says seven days. That says 19 days. That says uh, 13 days. And that says 14 days. Let me rewind it just a little bit so you get an understanding of what he's showing you. From that uh, exponential or logarithmic chart, is we can ask the question, well, how many days between it growing by a factor of 10? So here it grows from 10 to 100. And that took seven days if we count those little dots. And then to go from 100 cases reported to 1,000, that took 19 days. But this is under the don't test, don't tell policy. I think this is inappropriate. We this is the coronavirus now. People getting it. How many, how much it's increasing in numbers. People infected with it outside of China. You can see the, sh the slope of the line pick up a little. I think this is mostly due to testing at this point. This is a 13-day stretch to go from 10, from 1,000 to 10,000. And we haven't quite hit 100,000 uh, external outside of China cases as of this recording because the 15th isn't noted on here, but I'm going to bet you anything. When it does, it's going to land right on that 100K line right there. So that would be 14 days. What does that mean? It means in two more weeks, in another 14 days, there's going to be a million cases worldwide. It means in a month, we're going to be at, which is two weeks after that, we're going to be at 10 million cases. Case, case, cluster, cluster, boom. This is the boom stage that we've been worried about, we've been talking to you about it, that's going to flood the hospital systems. It's why. See, that's not good at all. And this is just the known cases. I mean, they ain't even got enough test kits in America still yet, as far as what I know, to even really test a lot of people with that. Uh, maybe my dad is sick right now. I'm worried about him. I hope he ain't got it. Hope, hope and pray, pray for my dad that he ain't got the coronavirus. And uh, also keep praying for me that I'm found worthy to go with Jesus in the rapture. And I'll keep praying for you guys that put it in comments. Please, guys, let's keep praying for each other. And pray for my dad that he's not sick with the coronavirus because he's got a fever and stuff. He ain't coughing yet. He's worried. He's, you know, he's hoping he don't start coughing. Let me show you this. Okay, okay. Let me get to the right place here, guys. Mark, it's Tom Boy says. Marcus Tomboy in response in response to coronavirus outbreak. I'm just going to show you just a few seconds of this. Can you see these people? That's what we're seeing at the stores around here. And if you notice, every one of them had toilet paper in the buggies. Uh, what's up with toilet paper? Does anybody know? <laughs> I mean, do they, they don't have. And one of the you know symptoms of this thing isn't di diarrhea, is it? I don't get that. We we had like to never found toilet paper. We had somebody that worked at Walmart, and they called us and told us when they got shipment in, and my dad got there. Went, he told My dad told us to call him, and he needed some, too, and he would go get it for everybody. He got some for us and for some for our, uh, my mother-in-law and father-in-law. There's done blow us and some for them, and got three bags. The last three packs they had of the big packs, and it was outrageously expensive. We never would pay that much normally for toilet paper, but we did have to, to have any, and... It's ridiculous. What's, what's people hoarding up toilet paper for? I mean, I don't get that. We just bought enough for us, you know. We didn't buy any extra, but people are hoarding it. I don't understand that. And usually I wouldn't pay nowhere near that price. We're poor. You know, we had to pay. It was outrageous. And Dad said they raised the price on two, some not a whole lot there. But it's, it's always high, that kind that he had to get. The more uh, name brand kind that we usually don't get. But I just don't get the toilet paper hoarding. If any guys have any explanation for that, put it in the comments because I don't get it. But if you notice here, watch how everybody's got toilet paper in line here. Looks like at Walmart. But he said that, uh, he said when he went out the last time, I ain't been out for a while in the store, but he said last time he went out, he said they had to stand in line. For a long time in the store and everybody was buying like certain items like crazy you know hoarding up certain items like toilet papers one of them i just don't get it 
And then I'm going to show you this. Let me get it to the right place, guys. Just bear with me one moment. I got so much stuff wrote down and everything else. Hang on one second, guys. If you've done seen this, this lasts about seven minutes. It's an AMTV video. I want you to see it. So if you've done seen it, you can fast forward through this part. Hey, everybody. I'm Chad Booksam. This is AMTV, Alternative Media Television. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope everybody is doing well. You and your families are doing well. God bless each and every one of you. Uh, please thumb up and share this video. Uh, as we discuss this coronavirus, I want to give you guys some updates, but also want to tell you just some personal opinions and things that I've experienced in my life uh, that kind of connects to what we're seeing today. You know, this always gave me the chills, but when I spoke to my great grandfather, you know, when I was young, you know, he told me that during the end, during the end time, Everything is going to stop. The whole world will stop. And, you know, I'm listening to his words in my head and seeing what's happening today when that's exactly occurring right now. The world is stopping. Production is stopping. People are quarantined, quarantined in their homes. Uh, public schools, I mean, look at here in Arizona, they're closed. All public schools are closed. It's happening across the nation. Uh, military is getting deployed onto the streets, National Guard, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, a lot of states. But what we're seeing here is not just a full-blown uh, virus pandemic, but what better moment to wh whoever's pulling the strings, because there's something they're not telling us. We've never seen anything like this in history, not even World War II. I mean, World War II, I mean, we were making money. Production was up. It was high, right? What we're seeing now is a full stop. And whoever's pulling the strings on this, I think a reset is absolutely happening because what they want to do, if they want to pursue any kind of agenda, regardless what you think it is, now's the time to do it. When everything has stopped and everything has shut down. We're getting our cues from a one world entity, which is the World Health Organization, kind of dictating to us uh, what we should do regarding this policy. And again, Think about their agenda. Think about the fact that, you know, this country has been in so much debt, uh, over $20 trillion in debt. It doesn't even matter. It's an illusion. We know it was going to crash. What better time to do a reset than when everybody is quarantined? Now, I want to give you guys a report that happened over the last 24 to 48 hours just to show you the mindset of big government. And a lot of people, you know, want government to come in and be the ones that save them. They're not going to save you. And it's actually a negative impact that will have on your freedoms as Americans. So I want to read you this report. A coronavirus patient in Kentucky has been placed under 24-7 armed guard after refusing to self-isolate. 24-7 armed guard after refusing to self-isolate. Governor Andy Bashir said that the state had to make this unusual move to protect others nearby. Now, again, this is happening in Kentucky. Deputies are now stationed outside the 53-year-old man's house around the clock in Nelson County. This is a quote from the governor. It's a step I hoped I never had to take, but we can't allow one person who we know has the virus to refuse to protect their neighbors. Now, the unidentified man is the only coronavirus patient in that county, and officials are worried that it could get uh, infect others. A total of 18 people have been tested positive in Kentucky. So what has this shown you? That government agency, the military, armed guards, whatever you want to call it, kind of all the same thing to an aspect, will enforce the quarantine upon you and completely take away every freedom that you have. Now, think about the situation that we're in. Everything, again, is shutting down. Stores, Nike, Apple. Uh, I get, I'm getting calls from my friends, uh, for companies they work for. Companies are telling them to go home. They're closing. They're closing up shop. Production is closing. Think about malls. Think about restaurants. Think about things that are non-essential. But then think about things that we take for granted, like the people who pick up your garbage in front of your house. That gets stopped because they're workers too. You need people to operate all these essentials, all these basic necessities that a lot of people take for granted. So when you're thinking about how to prepare and what to do, you need to think about of that aspect. 
So obviously food supply, water supply have a lot of propane, but we also have to understand that what the mainstream media is doing is putting out so much fear into the people that it's actually affecting your immune system. This is my personal opinion, that when you're living in fear, you're more likely to catch the virus. If you okay, now let me get it to the next section. I want you to see the important things he's talked about in this video. Where she was, show me proof. Okay, right here, got Oh, actually, of this, just a little bit farther that. than that. Where did you come Let me get her. Okay. And that's a good thing. Okay, right here. Thing, but look at the severe lockdown that's happening in this country with our freedom. Now, people have to be smart, but you're going to see not just things like public schools, not just restaurants and bars. I mean, they're all losing business. They're all going to close their doors because these people, people work for them. So they're going to act the same way. They're going to self quarantine. But we're going to get to a point where your power companies, your garbage services, your water services, your utilities, whatever the case might be, this can all shut down as well because it takes people to operate it. Now, we're seeing curfews being issued throughout different states. And who's going to enforce these curfews? Who's going to enforce it? So you're going to have a point to where the states and the National Guard that's deployed, they're going to be enforcing it with armed guards, task force, whatever the case might be. But people think martial law is out of the question. Unfortunately, wait till you see the rise in cases when all these tests start appearing, and it won't be, and it won't be at all. These are the baby steps to a totalitarian, full-blown mar full martial law full-blown martial law. So if you're in these densely populated areas, if you're in these cities and grids, if you have family or in rural areas, I recommend to go there if you can, if it's possible. Some people are unfortunate enough to do that. But we are in a, this has never happened before, guys. You guys know this, not even in World War II. This has never happened where everything is shut down. Everything has stopped. Honestly, you know, I pray for this country, I pray for everybody, but there's something they're not telling us because they wouldn't just do this over a flu. There's something they're not telling us. There's an agenda being implemented. Uh, we're going to see the markets keep crashing. We're going to see a financial reset. We're going to see our whole way of life change after this, the way we shop, the way we connect with each other, um, who's going to be in charge. We are going to see a coup take place, and this coup could be taking place as we speak. So look after one another. Look after your brothers and sisters. I love you guys so much. I'm going to keep you updated on this. As always, my name is Chad Book Sam. This is AMTV, hard hitting and in your face. All right, guys. And then, have y'all seen this video? It's called, uh, I don't know if you can see that. A crematorium refuses to handle COVID-19 corpses. And it's by uh, the Epic Times, E E P O C H Times, the Epic Times. What it talks about is the woman that works at the crematorium. Uh, she says the hospitals in China are not listing the true cause of death on the death certificates of recently deceased patients sent to crematoriums for cremation. The lady over uh, one of these facilities is, uh, was saying, uh, telling her reporter uh she's in china you know the one of the crematorium so she's over one of the crematorium facilities in china and she's uh she was telling the reporter that they would mark under the cause of death pneumonia or the cause of death they would mark for pneumonia or unknown for the cause of death and they sent with the uh, death certificates with the corpses they sent to the crematorium and they were sending all kinds to her and all kinds of other crematoriums and uh from the hospitals and that had died of coronavirus and uh, she said that uh, many of those had had the coronavirus and she and they was marking them as unknown uh, reason for death unknown or pneumonia see how they're skewing the numbers they're not even putting the real re re real reason for death down they're putting it as unknown or pneumonia or both and she said her employees would panic every time they got those corpses listed that way so their crematorium quit accepting those corpses listed as unknown cause of death or pneumonia and uh as that video there shows, if you want to go and watch it, 
uh, you know, they're hiding the true number of deaths from coronavirus victims. So the true number of deaths, from, like China's been hiding all along, is probably much higher than what they're telling us, just like it probably is in the U.S. because they're not testing a lot of people for the coronavirus that have symptoms. And uh, the... Uh, let's see. For in this, uh, in an example of this video, it shows a document in which the government publicly stated on the document that there was only one new confirmed ca uh, case of COVID-19 in Shang Shandong Province in China for the date of February 22nd on 2020. Showed it on the document there was only one new case, but the internal document from the government showed there was 61 uh, patients that were diagnosed and thus confirmed to have COVID-19 on that same date of February 22nd. So they showed one, but their internal document they, they discovered and the government has showed the true number was 61 that was confirmed to have it instead of one. So the 61 times higher than what they're showing. Also, the U.S. is not showing the true number, you know, uh, either because we're not testing a lot of people. And then there's one more thing I just want to show you guys. Just watch this little bit, bit of this video here, please. All right, Nike and Apple among the big names closing retail locations in the United States. Courtney Reagan joins us. She's got more on this front right now. And Courtney, you think this is just a precursor of what's to come? I really do, Becky. I feel like pretty soon we won't need these lists and we're just going to say everybody's closed. They're going to continue to change these lists, but at least this is what we have now when we're living in this new normal in a country where officials are asking us to limit our gatherings, we're encouraging social distancing, imposing curfews, closing bars and restaurants. So among the retailers that we know right now are closed, mostly here for about two weeks, include names like Apple, Nike that you mentioned, but also Under Armour, Lululemon, Columbia, Patagonia, Abercrombie and & Fitch, and Urban Outfitters, plus a number of smaller names like Warby Parker, Everlane, Albers, Glossier, Away. And again, that's not a completely exhaustive list. The good news is for most of these store employees, they will continue to be paid while the stores are closed. Others are shortening hours. Now, these are mainly grocery stores, which makes sense. They have to have time to be able to restock their shelves and clean their stores. So these names with shortened hours include Walmart and its neighborhood markets and Sam's Club locations, Publix, Stop and Shop, Natural Grocers, Wegmans, Trader Joe's, and some Kroger stores. Gap, Old Navy, Banner, Banana Republic, those are also operating under reduced hours. B. Riley FBR analyst Susan Anderson estimates that annual earnings will fall an average of 18% for the spend. It goes on to show that how the uh, stocks are dropping a lot of places uh, and earnings and uh, I don't know what all it shows, but I didn't really watch to pay attention to the rest of that, but it uh, basically is showing just like, you know, Walmart cut their hours. They're usually 24 or seven open and they cut their hours from like uh, 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. now. And uh, it was packed when uh, before because people were going out trying to hoard stuff. And I, from according to what my dad told me, I haven't been out in a while. But he said it was before they even cut down hours, so I can't imagine now. But uh, with all these businesses closing and no, uh, they're telling people not to go out and eat at restaurants and recommending restaurants shut down and bars closed down and everything, which I'm glad the bars closed down. I wish they wouldn't ever open bars in the first place. But but uh, with everything shutting down, you know, the economy's going to just got to crash. You know, and they're telling people not to eat out. And uh, so, you know, and... They're closing schools all over. There's everything is closing. And pretty soon they're going to be driving tanks up your streets and putting people on martial law, uh, locking everybody down in America. They're already doing that in some places, not actually driving the tanks up, you know, in America yet. Uh, but they are locking uh, places down in America and, and calling up National Guard for some areas, the way I understand. So... It's getting bad, guys. You better have Jesus. He's your only hope. Jesus is your only hope, guys. He's your only hope. There's no hope in anything in this world. The only hope is in Jesus Christ, guys. I love you guys. Goodbye.